We've got a 1959 green Olympia SM3. Today, we're gonna to be doing a tutorial on how to use an Olympia SM3. So, grab your typewriter if you've got one. I'm assuming you've got one if you're watching this video and work with me. We'll go from back to front and um, I'll show you how to use your typewriter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna start with the back and um, look at the tabs. So lift it up and be careful when you do. I have a non-slip um, felt pad underneath it because you don't wanna damage your tape roll and you also don't want your typewriter slipping out from under you, which it can do. And uh, so right here, you're gonna see, these are all your tab stops and this is considered a manual tab. And one of the ways you know that you have an SM3 is you have the manual tab sets, which this is what they are. And so you just press and drag and to put your tabs wherever you want them to be, okay? And that's how that works. All right, so let's go ahead and set this back down. So right back in here is where you're gonna find your margin. So the rulers um, are really just to help you um, know where you, on the paper you want your margins. Um, secretaries were really good at knowing how to center everything and that's why um, all the typewriters have little rulers on them is so that you can figure out how to center um, your lines and then also if you're using multiple pages of paper you can make sure that the margins were always in the same spot to set your margins you just pinch and then drag and then everything about the Olympia is smooth these are very well made machines um, they shouldn't have any hesitation to them they should be as what I call smooth as butter um, and that's how great these machines are so set your tabs for however you want. Over here on the right side is your paper release, which we'll show you more about that here in a second. And then the carriage release on the Olympia is right here on top and you just press it down and um, you can hear the bell on this one. Most Olympias, here's your carriage lock. So when that's in the up position, this carriage, it's not going anywhere. So if you have one and you can't figure out why your carriage is stuck, you press that down and now your carriage is released. Okay, continuing on the right side here, you'll see a little button, press that, and that is your paper holder, voila. And again, I'm just gonna keep that there for now. Um, on the left side, you're gonna see these red tick marks. And that is your um, line selector. So that's triple, double, single, and no, that doesn't. Some of them may go all the way up to a little dot and that's just, um, that's nothing, it won't advance. Also right here, I'm not sure what that one does. Um, anyway, this is your return handle. There we go to release the plate and so you know when you're turning your roller it click 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 clicks um sometimes you don't want it to click because it clicks every half of a line sometimes you need to line something up just in between that on the right side some of the other typewriters are on the left but on the olympia on the right side you'll see a button at the end of the roller handle just press that in while you're turning and that releases the roller, okay, and or disengages it. Okay, so 
if you move that carriage all the way to the left, we'll pop open the top and you'll see your spools. Now, um, we have put in metal spools in this one and I think I have to double check. I'm not sure if universal ribbons will fit in this or not. I think they will, um, but we happen to have metal spools in ours. And um, you can't just pull it out like the other typewriters. You'll notice there's little metal arms right here. See, and you can flap it back using, there's a little knob right here, or you can just use your thumb and pull those back. And then you can pull out the spool put it back down in there make sure it goes all the way down when you put your ribbon in black is on top red is on bottom needs to go in what i call the double barrels so it's going to make your my hands all messy but let's put that back in there oops i missed it there you go and thread it through the center area. Again, you have another guide wire here on the left. There is an up close photo of this area on the product listing. That link is in the description below and um, you can keep that for reference. Now to reverse the direction of your ribbon, these double barrel thingies, that's your ribbon reversal and you can do either side, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going this way, this way, this way, okay, so that is your manual ribbon reversal. Let's go ahead and snap that down. Down here, we already talked about that. That's your carriage release, margin release, and your tab. Let's load a piece of paper, and that way you can see um, some of these things in action. So you're gonna load your paper right here. I mean, you see this little plate here? but it's right behind that little plate. Set it there, you don't need to shove it down in there, you just set it down, turn your handle, make sure that piece of paper comes underneath the metal bar. I come all the way up halfway to make sure it's even, which it is, woo -hoo. If it wasn't, you can pull forward that paper release and adjust your paper, um, and then make sure you re-engage it. Um, we'll keep that paper handle, uh, paper holder up. Let's come down here. Um, when you go to the end of your margin, you'll hear your bell. And when you're at the end of your margin, you just hit, and maybe you're in the middle of your word, you hit margin release, and then you're able to keep going. So let's see that in action. So testing. there's the bell saying, hey, really you need to hit the return handle when you hear that bell. But let's say you keep going. Kind of like Dory, just keep going. Okay, so now it's stopped on me. Now I hit my margin release, going, and I can go to the next line and just keep going. And that's by Dory. Wasn't that from Finding Nemo? My kid, Kids are grown, so I don't remember. All right, nice font on these Olympias, by the way. Okay, we talked, we showed you how to set the tabs to advance through your tabs right here on the right side. Okay, there's your tabs. This arrow is backspace. Okay, backspace does not erase, it just backspaces. Um, and then your color selector is down here, so you've got red, uh, it's a blue dot on the top, red dots on the bottom, white is in the middle, white means stencil. It's not gonna do anything for you. You cannot type on the stencil setting. So two things to look for. If you're typing away or you, you get on it and for some reason it's just not typing the way it normally does or it stops on you, two things to check. Make sure you don't need to reverse the direction of your ribbon and make sure that your color selector is firmly on the blue dot or the red dot. So that is how you use your Olympia SM3. If you wanna know the serial number, um, let me show you that real quick. So you'll need to lift up your typewriter, kind of turn it around, let me put this down, it's in the way. It's not in a convenient place, unfortunately. 
So your serial number is stamped right here. Let's see if I can, right here, um, under the frame at the very bottom. And then you can go to typewriterdatabase.com, look up that serial number. Um, you'll need to read um, the descriptions next to the serial numbers because the SM models tend to overlap sometimes. And so you have to read um, and look at it. So like the SM3, it'll describe that the SM3 has the tabulator, the manual tabs on the back of the uh, Olympia. And that's how you can tell it's an SM3 and also the shift key size. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful and that you're able to use your uh, vintage typewriter if you need help finding a local repair person. Um, we do have a typewriter repair directory on our website. It doesn't have everybody on there, um, but you can also, there's typewriter repair groups on Facebook. If you do a little bit of searching, you can probably find somebody. All right, thanks so much for watching. You all have a blessed day.